TT's options trading tools provide traders with all that they need to view and analyze option markets, identify opportunities, and assess position risk. In this webinar, we will provide a tour of options on TT and demonstrate how traders can use the available widgets and analytics to empower their options trading. We will demonstrate various ways to view and trade options, how to create and monitor option strategies, the flexibility of TT's options analytics, and how to monitor and assess position risk. All TT Standard and TT Pro users may view real-time options market data, create custom option strategies, send and respond to RFQs, and place orders for options instruments and strategies using a variety of order tickets and automated tools. We will also be demonstrating options on TT with the TT Advanced Option Package enabled. The Advanced Options Package is an add-on product that is part of the TT Advanced Settings offering. This does incur an additional monthly charge to your TT license. This feature can only be enabled by a TT admin as well. If you'd like to learn more about costs associated, please contact your TT sales representative directly. You can also email sales at tradingtechnologies.com. Let's cover the options chain widget first, as this widget allows for many other widgets to be opened directly from its display, similar to the market grid widget. The options chain widget displays all options for a given maturity with their bids and offers in the market and allows you to view options and multiple expiries for a product in a single options chain. The options chain displays strike prices in the center column and displays premium prices for calls and puts in the left and right hand columns respectively. The options chain widget displays the following data, strike prices, the name of the underlying futures contract for the options maturity month with the best bid and ask price and quantity displayed, the at in and out of the money calls and puts data using a black line to show the at the money strike as well. Also with the advanced options package you'll get the theoretical call and put option prices based on an options price model, volatility values for call and put options, and the delta for each call and put option. So why would someone want to use the options chain? Well, it's TT's options chain gives options traders the ability to view options contracts in an industry standard display and the power to quickly enter orders with their preference of order entry widgets. Users can add and adjust option-specific data columns to display options relevant to data versus using the TT Market Grid to view their desired options contracts. Users can also quickly select option legs to build strategies directly from the options chain and send to the strategy creation widget, saving users clicks and time. All right, next we're going to move over to the platform and we'll start uh, going through the differences uh, between options chain and options chain new, and uh, we'll go through uh, how each one works. All right, so we're going to display this in the simulation environment. Uh, we will have live market data here in the simulation environment. Um, one constriction I will have, though, is I won't be able to RFQ uh, in this environment. Um, I will try and do that uh, when we get into uh, strategy creation, uh, but I won't show that here in the options chain. Here, let's start with uh, how to basic open it. I already have one up here. Uh, we're going to be working in a crude oil, LO, the April contract. Um, but you can find the widget here if you click on widgets. You could come down to options, and then, like I said, there's two. There's options chain and options chain new. Right now, I have an options chain up, so why don't I go ahead and click an options chain new. The market explorer appears here. Come and choose my product. Choose LO again. So then the, the data starts to populate in here. Uh, the big difference between options chain new and options chain is options chain uh, allows one term on the screen at a time. So here I'm just looking at the April. The options chain new allows me to have a couple different expiries terms. Um, here I could choose. I'm just going to go ahead and choose two real quick. And right now I'm showing all the strikes. The original options chain, it does show all the strikes. This one, I can actually reduce the amount that I see. And there's just three strikes. And then I could collapse it as well. Using this calendar right here, I could bring in more if I wanted to. I'm going to close out this new options chain. You could also go here uh, if you have a market grid. I can open up an options chain directly from the market grid too. I could send the March or the April if I want. Let's do the May. I can right click on my option on my futures contract and say open. And send that to options chain brings it right here allows me to then choose the specific product inside the options family and now we'll choose may there we go so with these tabs here, here i'm going to minimize this 
So here I have the April and I have the May. If I wanted to, on the original options chain, if I hit the little plus right there, the next expiry comes in. And then I can toggle back and forth. Uh, I can also transpose the rows. So I could take a, this look if I prefer. Again, here are your calls. Here are your puts. Strikes down the middle. Right click, transpose rows. And here in the normal view, calls are on the left and the puts are on the right. I can hit the space bar, come back to that midpoint. Here is the underlying future, 7683. There you go. Also, uh, you can go ahead and rename each of the widgets. Um, I've actually done that already. If you right click on the title bar, I uh, can say rename widget. I named this one crude options before. A good reason to do that is if you minimize it, you can quickly bring down whatever you named it. So here I had NAT gas options. Here I could quickly bring back that crew that I had. I could also lock the widget. So right here I'm going to lock the underlying price at 7681. And then all my theoretical prices will freeze at that level too. We'll go through these columns in a moment. So like I said, I do have the advanced options package on. Um, I did add all the columns here. You can add columns by right-clicking on the column header, saying Edit Columns. If you do have the Advanced Options Package, all the columns are available, uh, including the Greeks, the Deltas, the Theoreticals. So I added them all here. So here, and again, you can arrange these in any order that you like, right? You could be working cells you don't want there, move it to there. Whatever you need to do. If you do move any of the uh, the columns and then you want to make sure that you save that as a default, you would right click, go to settings options chain. And if you make any other changes that you want to set as a default, you make sure you go up to the upper right corner and click as a save as an option chain default. And then if you have another tab open, make sure you hit up, update existing option chain widgets as well. And then that tab or all the corresponding tabs will also change. So if you make a change on the columns and you like what the columns look like and you want to push it all out, Make sure you save it that way. We'll get into the columns here a little bit more as well. Uh, here are the theoretical columns. Uh, you got the TT file right there. Uh, there's the implied file, the settlement file. The active column, uh, that's the, uh, if you do make changes to the vol curve, uh, which we'll take a look at a little bit later, uh, then that would become the active one. Uh, but right now the TTV would be the active. So the option chain displays volatility values. Um, like I said, TTV, implied vol, and sentiment vol. The active column always shows which volatility is being shown. And then TT calculates and stores volatility curve values that are used for shaping the volatility curve and determining the price of each option. These calculated values are displayed in the TTV column, like I was speaking on. So we'll get to that in a little bit down the line once we get into strategy creation as well. See how we can uh, change uh, and make uh, our volatility curve the active one here. And again, this is all part of the advanced options package. Uh, the basic package, uh, you would have, you would see your call and put data. You would see here quantity, right? You wouldn't get the delta. The delta is showing here now with the advanced options package as well. And then you get the Greeks down here as well. All these columns, like I said. You can adjust them, put them in any order that you want. So, as well, uh, if you want, we can touch quickly. There's not too much else outside of the advanced options package here, besides uh, what you're uh, being shown on the options chain. Uh, you get this uh, display here. And the basic one, you just get the, the, the call and put data. All right, now maybe we should move on to placing an order from here. So just like your market grid, you see the, the blue and the red columns here for the bids and the offer. You can left click on that. That'll launch your order ticket or your MD trader, depending on what you have set up. Uh, here is my linked one. Uh, so anyone that I click on, 
it's going to go ahead and automatically send it into that order ticket here. And then it's the basic order ticket if I want to do an outright, right? So if I want to buy 10, uh, let's go ahead and place a limit order, right? I confirm. There's my working order. Buying 10. Seventy-three fifty calls. I can make changes then in the order book if I want to. And with that, here you see this working column. I could hover over my working buys, and then the floating order book appears here too. So I could take action here, I could cancel that order if I wanted to. Once again, quickly, quick uh, click on. The strike right there and that will launch the order ticket I can go ahead and I can create a group widget as if I want as well I can attach this and now it's together and again any strike that I click on will feed right up into there as well ungroup it if I don't like it like that get back like this That's a straight order entry on an outright if I had to do an outright. Here, with the advanced options packages as well, I get the the Greeks and the theoreticals here on the order ticket as well for my order. That's part of the advanced options package. And then I could also right click on the order. I could send it to other widgets as well, right? So the MD Trader, I could send it directly to Block Trader if I wanted to. Right click on the strike itself. I could send it to strategy creation. We'll cover that in a little bit. Uh, we'll go into strategy creation, how we can go ahead and build option strategies inside the options chain and send it to strategy creation. We'll cover that in a few more minutes. You could also RFQ uh, the option directly from here and submit an RFQ with quantity, left click. And then you'd hit submit. One important thing is if you are gonna RFQ, uh, you do need to set an RFQ routing account. So come up to the top left, you click on edit, you go to preferences, go to accounts, routable accounts, click on RFQ. You do need to check, uh, click on one of these guys here. I suggest making one the default one, whichever account uh, is your default account. Just go here, routable. So it's again, it's edit, preferences, accounts, routable accounts, RFQ and then choose one of them and go ahead and hit save. Uh, I'm in this simulated environment, I can't do it. But again, you can RFQ if a contract doesn't have a, a bid and offer, you can just submit the RFQ or submit an RFQ with a quantity. You can also send this to a, a dedicated watch list. We'll get into what the watch list is in a little bit as well. But that is part of our advanced options package as well. And then you could come down here and come into the settings. Uh, one setting to take a look at is uh, the heat mapping, right? So here, highlight bid and ask when the theoretical value is through. Here, uh, let's make it a little bit tighter right now. If you don't want this on, it's on by default. And that's these colors I'll show you in a second, but you put it to zero. Right now we'll get it a little more aggressive, right? So here we're looking and it's uh, the, the darker the color, uh, the more that it's gone through the theoretical value that it's showing. Again, this is part of the advanced options package is really where you would see it best. Um, so here, um, you see colors here, and it's down in this section here. How many levels and what the colors mean. The lighter means that it's just gone through one level, two levels, and it gets darker. Let's see if we get it. There we go. All right, so there's the theoretical value. And now uh, by the settings, I think we did it by 12 and a half point, uh, 12 and a half ticks right here. So option settings, interval and ticks. And you can make that much further, apply and save. It's gonna be a full tick. And there, we're seeing the options heat mapping right there. Let's move on next to strategy creation, the RFQ viewer. Uh, we will come back while we discuss uh, strategy creation to the options chain. And uh, we'll discuss uh, the spread builder from there. Um, but I just want to move on to uh, the next 
segment here, and then uh, we will come back to this widget. Next, we'll cover the strategy creation and RFQ viewer widgets. The strategy creation widget provides you the ability to create custom, user-defined strategies and submit them to the exchange. User-defined strategies or structures are synthetic spread instruments where the legs can be options, futures, or spreads as defined by the exchange where the strategy is submitted. Users can use the spread builder functionality from options chain to also see the strategy creation widget. The exchange validates the user-defined strategies and publishes the strategy definition to all marketplace participants. Users can then obtain a price for it via an RFQ, if needed, or directly place an order on that strategy. Rules for supporting user-defined strategies vary by exchange. The RFQ viewer provides you with the ability to monitor and act upon an RFQ, a request for quote, for an instrument. The widget receives RFQs for instruments from all market participants and broadcasts them to the users in your company. You can submit orders or resend the RFQs for these instruments directly from the RFQ viewer. In addition, you can easily open strategy creation directly from the viewer to create your own strategies. All RFQ messages received from the market are displayed and archived in the audit trail as well. So users like to use the strategy creation widget, which allows them to quickly add the needed legs for a custom strategy, including using a strategy template and make on the fly changes. The widget lets a user visualize the custom strategy ahead of a request for quote and make any changes using the instrument picker on the fly. A user can also view the theoretical values ahead of the RFQ. RFQ Viewer allows a user to view in real time all the RFQs being submitted for a specific product. This allows the user a detailed look at the current trading scenarios and then using those as templates to send to the strategy creation widget. So the strategy creation widget and RFQ Viewer are not part of the advanced options package. Uh, you would have access to these uh, when you first come onto the platform. Uh, they do have some aspects that are used from the advanced options package and we'll cover that. Also, I'm going to be in uh, the UAT environment uh, where I can actually send requests for quotes to the exchange. Uh, I need a live connection to the exchange and the, the SIM environment does not have that. Uh, we'll toggle back and forth between the two. Uh, please keep in mind though that that UAT environment is not live market data. Um, so we'll just have to make do with what's there. All right, let's move on to the platform now. All right, so here on the platform, here's the, uh, the options chain that we have. Uh, let's just go down, you go to widgets, and then you could open up strategy creation uh, directly from there, click there. And you'll see right here, strategy creation is not supported in simulation. All right, so let's just move real quick over into the UAT environment. Here I have the, uh, the March option up for crude. Uh, there's a bit of a market here, so we should be able to work in this. Uh, again, uh, I'm just gonna bring up the widget directly. So go to widgets, options, and then strategy creation. Let's just reseat this a little bit. All right, um, one thing before you move forward, uh, if you are gonna create uh, a strategy that you're gonna have to RFQ, you do need to set what's called an RFQ routing account. So here we go to edit, and then you go to preferences, and then you go to accounts, and then down here on the routable account section, click RFQ, and I have this one as a default. You could set one or a default for all your exchanges, or you could pick and choose individual accounts for each exchange, whatever you like. And then you hit save. Okay. So here's the strategy creation. And you can hit this button right here if you just want to build straight from strategy creation. Uh, it'll bring in the last uh, contract that you had. So here, just run that March. Uh, this instrument picker here allows me to go ahead and choose on each line and make changes, right? So if I didn't want LO, maybe I wanted LO1 a weekly, right? I could do that. And again, everything here with this picker, I could change the months, I could change the strike, I can type here and it'll jump to what I'm looking for, calls and puts, the side and the ratio. All right, so then if I wanted to, then I can go ahead and then put in my, my second leg that I wanna create. Let's just do something simple real quick right here. All right. So with the UAT environment, not every strike is gonna have uh, data, but right here, the 78 call, you can see the bid and offer right there. If there was bid and offer, that would be there. Uh, with the advanced options package on, it's showing the theoretical value for each individual leg, as well as the, uh, the Delta and the rest of the Greeks. And then here, ahead of time, before I even RFQ'd, it's showing the theoretical value and the rest right here all there for before I go ahead and actually submit this, right? So here, I built this out. Uh, I can come here and then I hit this create button. 
Once I hit that create button, it'll go ahead and it'll send it to the exchange where then in this section here in status, it showed resolved and then created it. After it's created, I can then, if I needed to, directly trade from strategy creation widget. I could send it to block trader. I can send it to what's called the watch list and we'll cover this more in detail later, but this is a dedicated advanced options package market grid in a sense, just for options. We'll cover that more later. And then I can always RFQ it again. So that's how you can go ahead and quickly pull down and add whatever legs you want this way if you want to go and choose your legs directly from the strategy creation. You can also use what's called the templates right here. Click on these and this will give you different templates for different structures that you could build. And again, it'll pull in the last contract that you had in strategy creation and then you can make your changes if you wanted to. All right? And there's a lot of different templates in here. There's an iron condor and then it puts it in the proper ratio and uh, size and side order as well. One thing to cover real quick is, let me clear this, and then seed this one back into here. Now, if you make a mistake and you submit it in a manner that the exchange doesn't accept, you'll see that status and message right here. So here uh, on the CME, I'm going to enter the cell leg first. Oops, so this one already exists with the opposite, right? So strategy already exists with opposite sides. So let's see this again. But this time, let's just change the strike a little bit. So let's make this a 77. And then again, I'll flip the sides. And here it failed and gave me the rejection message directly from the, the exchange, the CME. Er, creating contract, contract is invalid. To create a valid VT spread type, reverse the buy sell. So here, put this back in, make the changes that are required. And we attempt again, and there we go. Now it created that. The RFQ will stay here. Anything that you create, 25, the last 25 will be here. If you do need to eliminate something, you could right click, and then you can delete it. You could also right click and then send it to the other widgets. Send it directly to a market grid if you wanted to. And there we go. And then you can always see it like here as well. So you can right click and delete, or you can go ahead and seed it, and it comes back into this section. So that's how to use strategy creation on its own. Uh, but strategy creation has a lot of other functionality where then you can seed it quickly uh, for faster RFQing and strategy building, structure building. Here, I'm just gonna close this one out real quick. And here on the options chain, you could go about and you could quickly create one using our spread builder functionality. So these buttons up here, these are the strategy creation buttons. Uh, you can access those by going to settings, options chain, set strategy buttons. You'll see them all right there. All right, and then what you do there is, uh, let's say you need to build a calendar spread, right? So you click on calendar, spread builder comes up, choose your strike. So here we're in the March, and then it asks, what's the next month that you wanna do? So if you choose April, and they're quickly sent it directly to strategy creation. You just hit RFQ, and there you go. Uh, looks like we had it uh, backwards there. Yep, let's put that back in. And there we go. Now it created that calendar spread for us. Back to here, we're gonna close this. Again, uh, we could do a fly, right? So spread builder comes up. We start choosing our legs for the fly. Oops. Uh, we're just gonna change that setting real quick. We'll come back to that in a moment. But here, here's our fly. And then if I want to choose the next leg, and if you notice there, when you're in the fly, depending on the second leg, it calculates where it has to put the third part of the fly in that orange box right there. All right, so I sent this fly over, and here you'll notice the ratio is proper, one, two, one. I could go ahead and I hit create. There we go. And then there's even this custom button right here. So here, let's close this. We hit this custom button. And then I can just on the fly, always clicking if I want to buy the leg, I'm clicking in the blue. Add the plus one and whatever I want to sell, minus one. 
It won't send it right away until I hit this submit button on the custom. There we go. And sends it over. Uh, inside strategy creation as well, uh, you can add a covered leg, right? So you can come here, hit this cover button, and then it automatically will come out and add that futures leg right here. It, you could change the price if you needed to, right? It's going to show the, the last underlying price, but you could change the futures underlying price that you want. And then here's the, the delta. Uh, if you have the advanced options package on, it will go ahead and it'll calculate that delta for you. A positive number is buying the futures. A negative number is selling those futures. And then here uh, as well, you can lock it. And it locks it right here when I added that right before. And you see this lock button. I can unlock. Well, it's locked. And then go ahead and I can hit create. All right. So now it created it. And there you see that's a cupboard, right? So I could go ahead and I could trade this. Back to the options chain once again. So these strategy creation buttons. I can even take a strategy creation widget and I could group it with the options chain if I wanted to. So here you, now you see it's grouped. I'm going to right click, go to the settings, and I'm going to come down and send spreads to strategy creation linked. Hit apply and save there. And now any leg, if I come here and I create my fly, I could use the buttons here, right? And I could start going ahead and it automatically sends it right there. Or I could throw that out. And then if I just choose any leg, right? So here I'm going to click. There's the 74 half, right? And see here, as long as I, any calls on the left, puts on the right, 77 call. I click there. As long as I'm not clicking on the bid and the offer, it's going to go ahead and update it, you see? I'm just going to show that one leg. But then if I want to do a quick spread build, I can just do the custom. So I can say custom. And now the legs that I start choosing come in here, as long as I'm in spread builder. There we go. So that's going ahead and linking strategy creation to an options chain. You can access the order trail and right here. You'll see all the RFQs that you created. All right, so let's go ahead and send this right now to a market grid. And it doesn't look like there's much been an offer, unfortunately, with the POAT environment here. Uh, let's see if we can find one that's, uh, yeah, got a bit of an offer. Let's create something real quick. So let's go ahead and do a custom. All right, hit create. And then send this over to our MD trader. And doesn't look like there's much bit an offer here. Uh, let's see if we can try and get an order in. Let's see if we can get a reject. Oh, there we go. Great. So we're going to place an order. We have a working order. Here, let's take a look. There's our working order. Here's that contract name that we created. Right. Send this over to the watch list from the order book as well. And I can send it over to strategy creation right from the order book if I wanted to. And then I can reseed it right here and then change anything if I needed to. There's our working order. I can also go ahead, like I said, and I can send this over to a market grid. So there it is at the market grid. Now you see our orders working. We're the best bid. And if I needed to, even from the market grid, I can open it and then send this back to strategy creation. Once it's created, I can even send it to block trader if I needed to. All right, next uh, we're gonna move on to the RFQ viewer. Let's move on to the li uh, live environment here. It'll be easier to see. All right, so let me just close out this one strategy creation. All right, again, RFQ viewer is found here under options and then RFQ viewer, you can open it this way. It allows you then to choose on the Market Explorer, CME, we'll do CL. And then here you'll notice, I'm just gonna choose strategy. I wanna see what the, the strategies that are being RFQ'd. I'm not gonna choose any of the specific products that fall underneath crude. I want everything. I want any combination of any product that's underneath the crude family that when it gets created as a strategy to pop up here. 
and then you hit select. All right, I actually created some before, so populated in. And here, this is everything since I started earlier this morning. If I see something that I want to pin and then keep, I can do that as well here. So say this one, and it goes up to the top there. And you see it'll stay at my top. I can do a couple, All right? So those, those are pinned now. If I needed to, I can re-RFQ. Can't do it here in the simulation environment. With the advanced options package on as well, the RFQ viewer, I get all the Greeks and theoretical columns as well, right? So I can go and add more columns, depending on what I want to do. See all these here, hit OK. And then that adds all these other columns covering all the Greeks and deltas. If I wanted to trade one of these right from the RFQ, I left click, it goes directly to my order entry ticket, and I can trade it. All right, I can right click, I can export the rows if I wanted to, I can open, I could send it directly to Block Trader if I wanted to, or Strategy Creation. Once it's in Strategy Creation, maybe I want to make just a couple changes. I'll be able to do that. Again, I'm in the simulator environment, so I can't RFQ here. And then you can create other tabs as well. So then here I could come and let's just do one quickly for mini S&P. Same idea. And then I'll start filling in as RFQs come in. And then you'll notice this turns yellow. So when a new RFQ comes in, the other tab that you're not in turns yellow. You go back and I'll tell you what it is. All right, let's move back onto the actual UAT environment. Let's go ahead and set up an RFQ viewer here. All right, so we're gonna set up an RFQ viewer right here. So let's go to options, RFQ viewer. Let's do it again for crude CL strategy. And then we hit select. Should be nothing here because we're in that UAT environment, right? So then with that up, Let's go ahead and RFQ this one. And once I did that, there it is. There's that RFQ that I just created. So it goes that quickly. Right there. So RFQ viewer, as these fill back in, Right. You can create a group widget too if you wanted to. You could stick it next to your strategy creation widget. You could stick it next to your options chain, whatever you like to do. All right, so that covers strategy creation and RFQ viewer. Next, we'll move on to the watch list. This is part of the advanced options package. Uh, you can only access this widget if uh, you do have the advanced options package on. Uh, we'll cover that in a bit. Watch list widget provides you with the ability to manage and monitor market data for selected options and futures instruments, as well as monitor Greeks and theoretical values of user-defined option strategies before actually submitting them to the market. Instruments added to the watch list persist over exchange sessions, which provide you the ability to act upon them at any time. For option strategies that you create and send to the watch list and do not exist at the exchange, the widget calculates an implied spread price for your user-defined strategy based on the prices of the outright leg markets and displays the implied spread price in the list. If the strategy you create is already available at the exchange, the watch list displays the actual market for the strategy. All right, uh, the watch list is more of a dedicated market grid for individual instruments or strategies and not their products or products families. This allows a user to create a more option-specific view of their workspace. Uh, it's a really versatile tool and powerful for options traders. It streamlines market data management, provides insights into Greeks and theoretical values, persists or cross sessions, calculates implied spread prices, and allows for pre-market analysis of user-defined strategies. These features collectively enhance the trader's ability to monitor, analyze, and act upon market conditions uh, for options and strategies effectively. All right, let's move over to the platform now. I'm going to stay in the UAT environment here. Uh, let's just clean this up. Uh, the UAT environment will allow me to go ahead and create. Yeah, let's just minimize this. Let's ungroup this. 
All right. All right. So if I wanted to, I can write from the options chain. I can send any right there. I can, there we go. And I can send any contract that I want directly to the option to the watch list, right? So there we go. So here's the watch list itself. I can also access the watch list by going to widgets, options, watch list. It would only be available if I had the advanced options package. And you'll notice that if I try to open up a second one, it won't open. You can only have one watch list open. All right. Uh, all these columns, I can adjust these columns. I can left click and drag them, put them in different order, as well as edit columns. And then when I add other columns, there's quite a few of them that are in here. And you'll see that many of them are options uh, Greeks, deltas, a specific, right? Option style. There's a lot of information in there. And again, I can drag and uh, move these columns in any order that I want. Excuse me. You can move these into any order. After I'm happy with the order that I have, I can then right click and then go to settings and then save as a default on those columns. So there's the watch list. And you see it does look like a, a market grid. All right. So here, that's just sending an outright. Uh, I can then go ahead as well. Start from here, quick fly, send it to strategy creation. All right. So here, I could go ahead and I can uh, send it directly to the watch list, or I could create and send it to the watch list. Let's just go ahead. Here you see the theoretical value ahead of time. I just want to go ahead and send to the watch list. All right. Since we're in this uh, UAT environment, it's tough. But uh, it doesn't look like, yep, yeah. We don't have any implied prices uh, for this strategy, this fly. Um, in the live environment, uh, it should uh, provide you uh, with the implied prices if they're available. Here you see that it's italicized. That means that it doesn't exist at the exchange yet. I can right click and I can set it back to strategy creation. And then if I wanted to, I can then go ahead and hit create. Now, go, it went ahead and created it. I can then go ahead and then send that to the watch list. And I can remove this one if I wanted to. Left click, remove one row. And there's the one that I just created and sent. I can do it all in one step too, right? So let's go back to here, quick custom. We'll just do something simple. Submit that over. And then here I can say create and watch all in one step. And then it goes right to my there we go, the risk reversal. Oh, we got a bit of an offer right there. Well, at least a bit. But yep, there's that. And then you can open this up. It'll show just like the market grid or show the market depth if it's available. Another feature that users like to use, uh, you can take something from the watch list and then if you have an existing market grid, uh, you can then go ahead and you can actually drag that in. So here, let's say we have an uh, empty tab, just close one. Crude test. All right. Let's just go ahead real quick. Just add some futures, right? So future CL. Let's just grab a couple of these. Well, let's say then I wanted to add this risk reversal. I can left click and I could drag it and I could drop it right into there. So now that actually lives inside the, the market grid as well, the existing market grid that I had. And then if I wanted to, you can always, from a market grid, you could send it to the, the watch list as well. Send a watch list, right? And there we go. So there's the watch list. Like I said, it, it's pretty much just a dedicated market grid, same functionality, but just for options. Next, we'll cover the volatility calculator. Uh, this is part of our advanced options package, so you would need to enable that, and this is this widget would become available. The volatility calculator widget is used for calculating the theoretical value and implied volatility of an option at an underlying price. You can enter a theoretical value of an option to calculate its implied volume, or enter the option's implied vol to calculate its theoretical option price. Users use this uh, so they can use the calculator to determine at what price you need to trade an options contract for a specific implied vol. You can calculate the implied vol based on the theoretical value and vice versa. All right, next let's move on to the, the TT platform so we can view it. All right, here's an options chain for crude that we have up right now. Um, here uh, I have my theoretical values here. And here's the implied right now as well for the call. I'm going to go ahead and if I want to go ahead and launch this, I can right click on the strike I want. You can either open it as a static 
on and then it would stay on that specific contract or I can open it as a launch linked as well. And with that here, if I click on any of the other lines, it will update which strike I'm looking at. And the static one will stay static. All right, so I'll use this linked one right now and it's pretty self-explanatory. Here, uh, we'll bring up the 75. Uh, let's look at the 75 put right now, right? All right, so the underlying price is 75.73 on the June, right? So here I can tell it, all right, what's the implied vol? Uh, if I do 33, the theoretical value of that would then be 5.08. And then I could even change this. I could say, all right, what do we add at 76? And the implied vol, let's move it up to, I don't know, 33 and a half. And there's the theoretical value. I could also change that as well. I could say, all right, let's see what it's at six. And there you see the implied vol changes. So again, each of these can feed off of it. Put it at seven, 45 is the implied vol, right? I go down to 40, theoretical value. And again, I can change the underlying, 75, 50. And then let's just say the, we wanna come down to, I don't know, 575. And there we go. So that's the vol calculator. Uh, you could also go ahead and create a group with, with this as well, if you don't want it floating. And then it works in the same idea. And there you'll see that it's updating to the different strikes that I'm clicking on. All right, next we're gonna move on to the TT options order types. We'll uh, demonstrate those. Next we'll speak on the TT options order types. TT Auto Hedger and TT Order by Volatility are synthetic orders that manage the submission and execution of other orders in the market. These are enabled for use at the account level and they are part of the advanced options package. TT Auto Hedger allows traders to programmatically hedge their options trades with the underlying instrument. The Auto Hedger order type is used when submitting an order for an options instrument. When the options order fills, the TT Auto Hedger uses the total delta of the executed options trade to calculate an order quantity for the underlying instrument. If the delta is positive, a sell order is submitted. If the delta is negative, a buy order is submitted. If delta is zero, no hedge order is submitted. The TTOBV, order by volatility, lets you enter an order for an options contract by entering a desired volatility. The TTOBV places the order at the price level that corresponds to the desired volatility. As moves in the underlying contract impact the volatility at each price level, the TTOBV will continuously reprice the order to maintain the desired volatility. Traders use uh, Order Hedger because it helps maintain a delta neutral position without having to take manual order execution on the underlying. And OBV streamlines trade execution by focusing on desired volatility and eliminating the need for manual premium price calculations. All right, let's move on to the platform here and we'll review how it works. All right, so from the options chain here, uh, we'll go ahead, we'll launch an order ticket on an outright. And here you see the order hedger. I select that right here in the TT order types. I'll choose auto hedger here. Again, hedge type is going to be order type uh, market order only, so it will automatically send out an underlying market order. Uh, and hedge quantity uh, rounding, uh, you got normal round down and round up. By default, TT Order Hedger uses the calculated hedge order quantity with normal rounding. However, you can also configure that with the round down and round up. We'll keep this at normal right now. Uh, also, we won't turn on the with the tick. All right, so here we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna buy 100. Uh, we'll go ahead, try to get this close. Uh, we'll try to do it at 81. All right, let's take a look at this your order right here. Great. All right, so looking here, the parent order is in working here at 581 it's released that child order once this child order gets filled it'll go ahead and it'll send the needed uh, lots that are done uh, depending on the amount of Delta it'll send uh, an underlying on the future market is sitting here let's just go up a tick all right great so now we're filled all right so you'll notice right here that at 582, the delta was 60.15. So now the order, the child order got filled at 582, and then it corresponded, it sold 60 of the uh, May crude futures to make up that delta of 60 that we had right there. So that's TT Order Hedger. If it got filled slowly, 
uh, let's say maybe only 25, 30 lots got filled, and it wouldn't have done all 60 there. It would have calculated uh, what it was doing right here, uh, and it would then understand that it needs to just do the smaller amount while calculating the needed delta to complete the full parent order right here. All right, let's take a look at the uh, TTOBV, order by volatility. Again, we'll go and launch. Uh, this is a 75 May call. 75 May call. We'll come here. Now we'll choose the OBV. All right, here we're actually entering the order by the volatility, right? So the 75 call, the volatility right now is uh, 3166. So let's put this a little bit lower at 31 even. All right, we'll buy 100. Again, this is the May 75 call. You can see that right there. Market right now is 546 at 551. See that right there as well. Go ahead, we place the order. All right, there's the parent order working. And it's working this at 538. All right, so here's the 75 call. Right now, that's, uh, if we take a look, it's 546 at 551. We're working this lower at 538 because we put in a volatility of 31. And right now, the, the volatility is 31.66. Here, we'll place a, a different order. And this, as the market moves, this will continue to uh, reprice as well, uh, trying to capture that 31 volatility. Let's see here, uh, let's take a look at the 76, All right? So we'll do this again, we'll do a 100 lot, we'll do the OBV here. And let's put this one uh, a little bit higher. Let's do this at, at maybe 32 through the market. All right, and you'll see that our order actually just got filled right away, right? Because let's see where I put it. Uh, we'll work here, order by volatility. Here's an order by volatility that we just placed, right? So here's the order, we placed it at 32, and it actually got filled at, uh, at 501, right? So here we have the 76 call. It placed the order. right here and it was filled so let's see specifically we got it uh, at filled at 495 All right so it bought the offer it placed it if we take a look right here it placed the order at the volatility of 501 and then the average price right here is 495 so this order right here the volatility would have been 501 at 32, right? Because we placed it at 32, so it calculated that it would then go ahead and try and buy, buy a 501. The market was offered at 495, so it filled us at 495 right there. And now going back to this order right here, you'll see that uh, the volatility we placed at 31, originally was working at 538, but now the market's, it's changed. So here you go to the order history, right? and see that it repriced itself a few times. Now 537, it replaced itself. 537 a few times, 538. So as the underlying, uh, as the volatility changes on the order, it'll keep repricing itself to try and capture that 31 volatility. So you can also go ahead and create templates if you wanted to. Uh, Auto Hedger, you could go ahead, create a template here, all right? Same idea, add template, test template. And then you could go ahead and create a custom action button if you wanted to. Order type, and then we're gonna choose TT Auto Hedger and template. And there you go. Not too many parameters there. Um, so you may not be creating too many uh, templates with this, but you can still do it. So again, uh, these are the two TT order types that come with the advanced options package. Uh, they both do need to be enabled at the account level. Um, you won't have access to these if you don't have the advanced options package, but TT Auto Hedger and TT OBV. Next widget up will be the Vol Curve Manager. Vol Curve Manager displays multiple volatility curves for an options expiration and gives users the ability to create their own volatility curves. This is also part of the advanced options package, so this widget will not be available unless you have the advanced options package. 
The graph displays the implied volatility for the bid price, the ask price, and the previous day's settlement. TT automatically fits a curve using the data and gives users the ability to fit their own curve using a number of control points. Additionally, users can view how TT's best fit volatility curve has changed over the course of the previous trading day. TT stores the auto fit volatility curve data at regular intervals. The bottom pane of the widget displays a graph of the at the money volatility for the current and previous trading sessions. The ATM volatility graph displays the at the money values for the period from 12.01 a.m. on the previous trading day to the present time. So traders like to use the vol curve manager because it enhances options trading with customizable implied volatility curves and insights into historical volatility changes. It lets them leverage this widget for strategic alignment, effective risk management, and informed decision making in the dynamic options market. All right, let's move on to the platform now. All right, here uh, I have the options chain open uh, for May crude again. Uh, if I wanted to, I can go quickly and use this button here. Well, we'll go there in a second, but here, let me go to widgets first. You come down and then choose options and then vol curve manager. Again, it will not be available unless you have the TT advanced options package on. I could click this way and open it there. But if I already have an options chain open, let me close that. I can come up to this button here and I can right click. I could say uh, open vol curve manager. And there it'll go ahead and it'll seed in automatically the options contract that I had. And right here, I'm gonna choose the May and there's the May and it's already loading up that vol curve, All right? So right now, if I hit this button, this unlock button gives me the ability. Right now it's at the auto fit. I could snap it to settle. Let's take a look down here. So here I can adjust how I'm looking at it. I could take off the auto curve. I could take off all these different ones, right? Close this out. There's nothing there. And then I could add them back quickly, all right? So here's that the TT auto fit curve. And then you could also zoom in. If you left click and hold and drag, you could zoom into different sections and then right click to come out. Uh, right now, the underlying is uh, at about 77. So let's take a look there, right? So here, here's the active vol right now. It's about 3140. So if we zoom in at the 77 mark right here, then you can see it's just about right there, right? So let's even get tighter. So there's the 77, and it's just about in the middle, right? A little bit lower, right? So we can see that, that spot right there, the active vol right now, the TTV, the auto fit, it's 3138. All right, I'm gonna come back out and then here I'll add everything else. And then what I could do is I can adjust my own vol curve, right? So I open this back up. I could choose what's the, the base to start with. I'm going to start with the, the snap to auto fit. And then from there, I get these standard deviation points I can move. All right, so let's get close to that midpoint. Let's get to that 77 area, right? So here's one right there. Let's get into it a little tighter. There's that one right at 77. Right, so right now, 3138, right, right there. Let's move this up. Let's move this up to, let's make it a little exaggerated, but we're gonna bring it up to 33. Then, after I hit this save button, here I can come back out, you can see what the curve will look like. Right, so there we go, there, I, I've adjusted that curve. If I hit the save button right here, that's gonna become the active vol. Give it a moment. And there you see it jumps, right? So I moved it up to about 33. It's at 32.94 right now. The TT auto fit is still down at 31.36. But the TT platform now, you can see here, it's going off that active vol that I created. And it's showing all yellow here um, because, again, on the options chain, I can say highlight bid and ask when the theoretical value is through a certain amount of ticks. And it's very through right now because of the extreme that I created there at 33, All right? Come back out, sorry, we'll get in over here. There's 77, there's 77 in this area, All right? And there's that. So let's take out these other ones, you know, the historical. All right, so there's the TT auto fit right now, right? And then there's my vol curve, which I've exaggerated. If then, if I want to make adjustments, I could just open this back up, the little lock, right? And then all the points, the standard deviation points become available. 
I could throw it out. And then automatically, that'll go back to the TTV, right? 3140. Or I could choose to, if I wanted to, snap back to the auto fit. One aspect to go over is days out, right? So if we're halfway through the day, I can make the adjustments there. Right? I have these different standard deviation points right here that I could adjust. All right. Refresh, throw that back out, go right back to the TTV. And then down here at the bottom, this is the at the money volatility, right? And then here, let's make sure you have to have that historical on, right? And then I can go ahead and I can see it at different times throughout the, the last day, right? This will go back till the previous trading day at 12.01 a.m., right? So there you see, it goes back. And there you see the different times. And then here's the volatility curve at these different moments. And just keep clicking. So that's how you can see the historical vol. There it goes. Refresh. And I'll keep updating the times. There we go. So the vol curve manager, you could also create a group widget and attach it if you wanted to to your options chain. A lot of users do that. Um, and then you got the settings in here as well. You can change uh, the interest rate to default if you had, uh, or to absolute. Day count, you can do calendar or trading days as well. All that is covered if you come inside the documentation as well. And I'll review that. But that's how the vol curve interacts. And it does, once you create this, your active vol, that does go across the entire TT platform, right? So. Uh, you can then create multiple ones for different months and then save them and then just get into each one as you go. Opening here will allow you to see what the auto fit and the settlement are. And that covers the TT Vol Curve Manager. Coming next, we'll cover the options risk and the risk matrix widgets. Uh, these are both, again, part of the advanced options package. The options risk widget displays your open position in the options contracts and underlying futures contracts for a product on a per account basis. The widget shows the current position and Greek calculations at spot price. It also allows the position to be viewed for user-defined scenarios based on adjustments to the underlying instrument price or adjustment to the global volatility. And then the risk matrix shows you a high level view of your options position across multiple scenarios at once. The matrix allows you to view changes to your position with user defined adjustments to both volatility and underlying price. Each cell in the matrix displays PL and global risk metrics, while the underlying futures price and global volatility adjustments intersect. The risk matrix can be displayed for products, underlying futures expiries, and option expiries in which you have an open position. Using options risk and risk matrix widgets allows traders to quickly assess their current position and understand the impact of market movements through real time Greek calculations at the spot price. This feature is essential for risk management, allowing traders to gauge how changes in underlying prices and volatility affect their positions. The options risk tool and the risk matrix tool are indispensable for options traders. They provide real-time and scenario-based insights into portfolio risk, allowing traders to make informed decisions, implement effective risk management strategies, and navigate the complexities of options trading with greater confidence. All right, let's move on to the TT platform now. We'll review these. All right, I did populate these already, but uh, each of these can be found if you go to widgets and then come down to options, and then you have options risk and risk matrix right here. I do also have a position widget open to show the position. I did create a position in the Brent uh, crude right now, April and May. Um, I am short 182 calls, um, long 81 and a quarter calls. I'm also long the May 80 and a half puts. And I'm actually long uh, the May futures outright. All right, so we'll start here with the options risk. So here uh, is the account dropdown. You would select your account. I already have the account selected here. Uh, it will then display the entire position. Uh, I just want to take a look right now just at the Brent options position that I have on. So bucket right here. Collapse and bring them all out. And then I can drill into each specific position. 
It then displays the position, the different columns here. Again, I could edit these columns. Put them in any order that I want. All right. Uh, you see here the position it's showing you, as well as the P&L, the open P&L, the market theoretical, and the rest of the Greeks right here. So it does provide you a nice quick snapshot. All right. So uh, again, here's the underlying, and this will be the absolute move. And then you have your volatility move here as well. You can apply adjustments to the price of the underlying futures contract and global volatility for the options risk to estimate their impact on your open positions. And that is important to understand is that this only works with the position in your account. So you do need to have the position on, but then you can maintain and understand the difference on movement. All right, so here uh, we'll do an underlying uh, five right here. Underlying move on the position, and then we'll do a volatility move of one right now as well. You'll notice here uh, that this button, uh, it says that changes were made, but they don't take activation until you actually click here. So here, uh, we'll see what our mark the theoretical is at the moment. And now we'll go ahead and put these changes to it. It's calculating. And there. So the underlying moved at 5% and the vol moved at a 1% a, a move. You can right click, come to here, display underlying adjustments as absolute or percentage. Uh, right now it's not showing as a change, um, but normally it should. Also, there's your different colors. One important uh, aspect of this in the settings as well is you can refresh risk on a fill or actually refresh this after a certain amount of time. Uh, the smallest amount is 15 seconds. And you can save that as a default as well. Here again, we'll collapse that. Oops. See our position here. And then that green right there, it's letting you know that it's about to update itself. So if that's showing green, then you have that automatic setting right here. Refresh risk on interval. Also, uh, negative and positive values here. So we could say a negative move on the underlying. And let's put a negative 5 move there. We hit this reset button right there. And again, we see what our shock is right there on the underlying. You could also create different scenarios, right? So you can create different tabs. I can rename this tab right here. I could say down 10, down 5. Hit save right there. And then I could create a different one right here. There's flat, right? Choosing the account. And again, it's automatically updating. So we set that right here. So that's the options risk. And then here we have the risk matrix. Again, under widgets, options, risk matrix. A risk matrix by default will start here down the side with the 5% positive move, 0, and 5% negative move. And you can uh, adjust those right here. Again, the volatility, you could set that as a percentage or an absolute, and the underlying as an absolute or a percentage. So here we're going to keep the underlying as a 10% move, and then we'll do the volatility as an absolute value. You hit save, and it updates right there. Again, we're looking here at the account, the beast in his account, and we're looking at my Brent position here. This top line here will take the futures and options together. And then this one here will just take the options. Same thing here with the, the Brent May, or I could take the entire position. So this is the entire position currently. And then here, I could just drill down if I wanted to, just to know the underlying on my Brent May expiry bucket right here. So my May options 
and I could shock it right here with the refresh. Again, here I created a different tab, and this one I added more, right? So, again, a percentage move in the underlying with a volatility move absolute, and I added negative two, negative one and a half. And you create different tabs. And you can set your columns here on the risk metrics. You can go ahead, say uh, clear all, and then just choose specifically what you want to bring in. Hit OK, and it updates it. You can save that as your default if you wanted to as well. Here as well, I could change my risk met uh, metrics, clear all, just choose these, hit OK, there we go. And again, I could refresh that. You could also uh, export the risk matrix as a CSV file too. You could come here, right click, export as CSV, and that'll actually go ahead and export that. You could send it out to you. A user or whoever else you need to send it out to. So again, uh, the risk matrix and the options risk widgets help users determine on their current positions inside their account what different scenarios would happen, shock scenarios. And you can adjust the volatility and the underlying on both. Up next, we'll have the electronic eye and options trade monitor widgets. They're both, again, part of the Advanced Options Package, so these widgets would not be available unless you do have the Advanced Options Package. The Options Trade Monitor widget displays all real-time and historical trades that occur for a selected family of products and provides details for each trade. By showing the trades for a product family, the Options Trade Monitor lets you easily see trades for all options associated with the product. TT's Electronic Eye displays market data for all puts and calls of an option expiry and can be configured to find trading opportunities based on your criteria. You can apply filters based on price, quantity, volatility, theoretical value, Greeks, and more. Once filters are applied, the Electronic Eye only displays the instruments that meet the criteria. You can then quickly trade any contract that is displayed. Users use the Options Trade Monitor and Electronic Widgets because they're essential for providing real-time trade tracking, market insights, and identifying potential opportunities. These tools enhance efficiency, enable quick decision-making, and provide the necessary information to navigate that dynamic options market effectively. All right, let's stop talking about it. Let's just go onto the platform, and I will take a look there. All right, here, uh, again, you have your accrued options chain up. Um, you can come to here, Widgets. You come down to this area, Options and uh, the trade monitor would be right there. You could launch it here, choose CME, and then you could go ahead and choose the family. And this will bring in every options contract underneath that crude uh, CL family. Every every instrument that could possibly be traded, and you click there. I actually have one that's already populated, so let's take a look. Here we go. So here, it keeps bringing in the, uh, the trade data. See, I started this earlier today. And here's all the different crude options that are trading. Uh, you can see LO is predominant, but LO1 right there, right? LO2, any relevant option that falls underneath the, the crude will appear here right now in this tab. Go ahead and you can pin that, right? All right, so here again, uh, these columns, you can move them in any order that you like. You can right click edit columns. You can add all the columns. This will go ahead and then specifically give you even more for options trading if you need. And then you can even create what's called filters on here, right? So you click this button right there, brings up the filter. Um, you can say add rule. Oh, let's just do something easy real quick. Let's just do trade quantity, right? Maybe you don't wanna see one lots. So you came down to here, trade quantity, greater than or equal to, let's say two. All right, you hit apply. It's gonna reload as it's working here. Give it a few moments. All right, great. So now, as the trade start coming through, it's got that filter, it's respecting anything to and above will start coming through. There's a lot of different filters that you can choose from, right? Different rules, so here, do and or. If you add a group, 
you can then tell it on the group itself, right? And or on the grouping. And you can add different tabs too. You see, this is now going, keeps going. Every quantity is above two, two or higher. And then from here, you can export the rows if you want to. You can open, you can do an order ticket, MD Trader, place a trade if you wanted to, or for something. You could send it directly to the watch list if you wanted to, right? Send it to your watch list. You can right click, you could send it to. The curve manager, right? All of these right here. If you keep this running, uh, it'll keep uh, saving it, and then you can go back on a certain date if you leave this up. So that's the trade monitor. And you can create multiple tabs, right? So then we can have one for mini SP, whatever you want. And then I'll start loading. Then the electronic eye under widgets again, options, electronic eye. You could open it that way. Interface is kind of similar to trade monitor up here. Brings up the market explorer. And then you type CL here. We're going to get into the actual product. You're going to bring in the specific product and then the term that you want, right? So I do have one that uh, I brought up earlier. Let's take a look at that one. So here I have the May crude options. Here you see every strike, right? All the strikes, telling if it's call or put. Again, all these columns, I can adjust these columns, edit columns, I can add all the columns if I wanted to. And then there's the, the bid and offer right there as well. If I wanted to, left click, place a trade directly on it. Same idea, right click, open. Right, I could send it to options chain if I wanted to. Right. Uh, but one thing with the electronic eye is the filters as well. So I did put on a filter here, and you'll notice that there's a lot less strikes, and it'll continuously look at the market and then add depending on the filter that I had. So this filter that I created, I took the delta, I want something at 70 or lower, and then the delta of 20 or higher. I only want to look at puts, right? So that's the end right there, right? And then here, I added a group. And then I said the buy edge, I want it less or equal to zero, and the sell edge less or equal to zero. So here it's end. And then inside of that group, it's or. And then you hit apply. And you'll see here that I'm only looking at the puts. Looks like from uh, the 69 strike up to the 84 fits the criteria of what I created in this filter. Here, you'll notice there is no filter, right? And it's showing the entire term with every strike. And you can adjust your colors also in the electronic eye. The electronic eye is manual though. Uh, you do need to be monitoring it. Uh, it won't take action on its own. It's uh, the functionality is not there for it. Um, but right now, if you do have the electronic eye up and you see an opportunity, depending on the filters, uh, you can just quickly trade on the order. So that covers the electronic eye and the options trade monitor. Uh, both of them right here, you see, they will continuously keep going. Then we got that other tab. Pulling in, trade monitor. You can create these different filters on both of them and have these filters respect how the markets are displayed on both. All right, last thing we'll be covering here on the options is the expiration manager widget. It is important to remember that permission to expire options is enabled by your administrator using the update position setting for a user or account in the setup application. Without permission, you will not be able to expire options, but can still use the expiration manager to monitor current and post expiration positions. So uh, the expiration manager widget simplifies position monitoring and accurate expiration of options positions, displaying positions by strike based on the entered underlying instrument price. You'll use this because it helps facilitate easy and accurate management of options positions, providing clarity on the in the money options and their impact on the underlying position. 
All right, let's just move on to the platform. We'll take a look at this. Real quick, let's just take a look here. Uh, here's the account that I'll be using. Uh, right now, I don't have any March crude. Uh, let's get into March crude here. Let's take a look. And I don't have any uh, crude options on at the moment, uh, crude uh, March options. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take a position here. Uh, we'll go in the money. Uh, let's just do 73. Right here, let's buy 10 of these. All right, so see our position right there, belong 10. So you can find, you go to widgets, and then you go to options, and then it's down at the bottom, expiration manager. Here's the account. You can choose any account that I have access to. Again, I do need the proper TT user setup permissions to be able to expire these options. After that, uh, it allows me then to hit this drop down where then it'll show me the options that are in the money that I can expire. If I choose these right now, it's showing that 10 lot position. I could change the underlying price that I want to expire these at. Uh, right now, uh, 77.91 at 92 is the market. Let's just say I want to do this at 77.50. And here, let's take a look at our position again. So right now I don't have any March positions, right? You can see here, I am long, right here, these 10, 73 calls now, right? So the moment I hit this here, expire options, this flashes again. It says, are you ready? Expiring these options will increase your position in the March crude by 10. I hit expire options and it gets done. Here now, 10 by 10. I'm now at flat position on that March 73 call, and now I have that new long position, and I expired those options into futures. Go to widgets, you can also see that in the audit trail. Right here, position modify. And it goes through it. There's no way if you do do this and then you want to undo it, you can't. Uh, you would actually have to go and then do a position, a manual position. So then you go to your uh, position manager, and then you would have to offset it there. Uh, you could either have uh, a local fill where it'll only be done on your PC, or you could do one if an admin fill has the rights to do it, they can do it, and then that will go through the risk check and then and show that. So once again, expiration manager. This allows you to take in the money options and expire them to futures before they happen on expiration date. Hopefully everyone here has gained a comprehensive understanding of the benefits and capabilities of TT's options offering we covered today. Again, if you'd like to inquire about adding the advanced options package to your TT license, please reach out to your TT sales representative directly. If you have any questions about the material covered, please email us at trading-ux at tradingtechnologies.com. Thank you very much for joining, and we look forward to seeing you for our next webinar topic at a future time.